Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of Late Night Dank Web Browsing. I got the little creepy, edgy lighting going on over here because some of the stuff we'll be looking at is a little edgier. And honestly, uh, Civic Guy's kind of been driving around a lot recently, so it's, it's better if I go underground. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to experience stuff that... Uh, Maybe random, maybe funny, maybe creepy, but ladies and gentlemen, as always, it will be random. So let's get together, get past this intro, and go to the very first website. Oh hell yeah, dude! Dinosaurs and humans. Oh boy, oh boy. No, I don't need a fucking... Wait, what did they say? There are only one race. Oh, oh god. Sound a little bit of Hitlery there, huh? Dinosaurs and humans. Alright, so this is the Creation Museum. Alright, so... You know, we obviously believe evolution, you know, is, is a main main staple of today's today's meme-tastic world, but I guess a lot of fe people feel fucking persecuted and they gotta hide creationist logic on the deep web, so let's let's look at that, you know? I mean, if you believe in creationism, you do. Again, I don't give a fuck. Don't, don't start a turf war in the comment section. I'm just an Indian dude browsing the internet. I could give, you know, a fuck, but let's go down. Old Earth proponents often argue that if man and dinosaur lived at the same time, their fossils should be found in the same layer. Biblical creationists believe that man and dinosaur lived at the same time because God said that he created man and land animals on day six. I'm pretty sure when like any religious text writes the fact that they made it on day six, I'm pretty sure God's perception of days are different than our perceptions, you know? Cause there's like that whole thing where they talk about religion, right? Like I read a story where um, someone had died. Their grandma died, right? And so when the grandma died, all right, they died like 50, 60 years later. For Granny, the perception of death was a couple minutes or something. So time moves really fast up in the land of heaven and, and whatnot. So it, it is weird, okay? It, it is something. News about dinosaurs and humans. Was there ever an advanced civilization on Earth before humans? That I want to see, okay? Because I actually do believe that. I believe that there was an advanced civilization before fucking Earth. So, I, I mean... Okay, I don't, I believe it could exist. I definitely see it could, um, but I, I don't know. I like to think that, okay? Was there ever an advanced civilization on Earth? That's a thought experiment being posed in an article published in the International Journey of Astrobiology. They argue the artifacts of the other remnant remnants of the civilization don't last for millions of years, so we couldn't find them today. But we might find geological imprints such as climate changes, the long-term effects of agriculture, plastics, and other man-made material, or nuclear war. They believe this thought experiment will help them in the search for extraterrestrial life. While most people would ridicule the idea of dinosaurs as some advanced pre-human being driving cars around Earth, some Christians try to argue for something similar. You see, they'll say that there's a gap of time between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2, and during that gap, millions of years of history passed. Including a pre-Adamic race, Satan is also thought to have fallen during this time, and that previous world was wiped in the Luciferian Flood. The idea called the gap theory is just as wrong as the thought experiment of these evolutionists. It does not come from scripture, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if they necessarily agree with it or whatnot, but I do believe in that. I think that, you know, us as human beings, maybe we're not the first people on Earth because Earth's been around for billions of years, ladies and gentlemen. I do genuinely believe that there is another race that came before us and we might not even be the last. I mean, imagine it. You know, in like two, three hundred years, what if we end up wasting ourselves and then thousands, millions of years later, another species rises up again on the same fucking rock once the earth rebuilds itself and we get to where we are. So, I mean, if that can happen for us, I'm sure it already has happened to us, if that makes any sense. So I actually kind of like this site there. They're, they're, they think about a lot of things that, you know, I think about. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of getting onto it. So extinct animals right over here. Let's see the extinct animals. Extinct crocodiles, so many mammoth fossils, giant fossil bugs. I'm glad the bugs got dead. I hate bugs in general. Bugs are fucking disgusting. Unicorns in the Bible. I haven't fucking heard of the unicorns. To think of a biblical unicorn as a fantasy animal is to demean God's word. All right. Some, an some cl people claim the Bible is a book of fairy tales because it mentions unicorns. However, the biblical unicorn was a real animal. All right. The Bible refers to the unicorn in the context of familiar animals such as peacocks, lambs, lions, bullocks, goats, donkeys, horses, dogs, eagles, and calves. God reminded Job the characteristic variety of impressive animals he had created, showing Job that God was far above man in power and strength. So... Apparently, God decided that the, the unicorn shouldn't exist. Now, here's here's the unicorn. Okay, it's got a little, little fucking stabby stab on the head. 
and this thing fl flies through space and it's all that dude you know you know what i wish existed you know falcor you know you remember falcor from the never ending story bro if falcor existed i think i cream myself honestly honestly i really would like falcor is my fucking spirit animal so creepy crawlies don't don't show me spiders i really don't want to see spiders oh god i hate fucking bugs so much i really do like if i see a bug in anything like it just like that that I get for some people, they think that shit looks really cute. For me, I just I just don't like it. I just don't like the way they look. Communicating ants, helpful honeybees, scary scorpions, beetles, insects, a hundred million year old spider. Oh God, no, no, no. I hate fucking spiders. Now, apparently what they take you to is an entire YouTube page called Answers in Genesis, which comes with 103,000 subscribers. So these guys are, you know, they're fairly popular. They got a little, oh. All right, let's <laughs> let's uh, let's mute the situation. Jesus Christ, um, did not expect that. <laughs> uh, I think it's just a channel trailer. So Bill Nye tours. Okay, so they even got Bill Nye on this. Now this is a channel, you know, that's that's got a fair amount of views going on. It's an apologetics ministry dedicated to enabling Christians to defending their faith. Blah blah blah. That's fine. That's all cool and dandy. But they've got an active active channel. Like one day ago, four day ago, one week ago, one week ago. So these these guys are fairly popular, you know. And they talk about aliens, UFOs. They got Bill Nye over here. All right, fair enough. Um, yeah, this is this is a fair. Like look at that UFOs and aliens, Sandy Foundations, uh, Noah's Ark and the Flood, Darwin cannot explain. <laughs> okay, so. Once again, I really don't want to start a religious turf war. So what I do know is I'm going to back out of this and, and honestly just head off somewhere else. Jesus Christ. This, this, this is fairly sweet, though. So let's zip and go somewhere else. Ooh, we, we're getting closer now. It doesn't help the fact that next month um, we have, you know, the anniversary of the, one of the most tragic events of North America or American history, 9-11. Uh, and before I continue, obviously, big, big heart goes out to a lot of people that have lost their lives on 9-11 from every side by the way it doesn't have to just be the lives we lost at the uh, at the falling of the twin towers but it can be lives lost to civilians who were killed by insurgent forces overseas which were in the fucking millions it's it's a crazy situation how many people died because of 9-11 during it and and just after it and 9-11 was one of those things where it's like it was such a big change especially for me like an indian dude growing up like as a child everyone looked at me really really funny and I mean, I would say that it's pretty fucking weird for me not to, like, feel anything out of it, but uh, I do feel something out of it. Like, 9-11 was not a good thing for <laughs> for an Indian dude <laughs> growing up. Let me tell you, everyone did look at me funny, which, you know, it is what it is. But let's go down over here. Let's see what's going on. So this is the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. Now, I believe that 9-11 is a conspiracy to definitely push American agenda internationally i think most americans kind of believe that to be honest with you it's, it's it's almost something that we know without looking into it but i also believe that it's not a conspiracy too sort of like a hybrid because you got to understand there was a lot of tension during that period of time right and and this was just something that was going to happen at some point so it, unfortunately it did and it really did change the world you know in terms of security and whatnot but anyways all that said let's go look into it real quick so They've got 3,164 architects and engineers signing on, 22,900 members of the public who want to look for this, who want to look for truth. And these are architects, so you can look at forensic engineers, structural engineers, metallurgical engineers. So these people know their shit, civil engineering, mechanical. Like these are people with, with, with knowledge, with understanding, master's degrees, you know, f fucking PhDs and what they want. This is something, this is something for real. Like these people really do care about it. Now they've got another YouTube channel, I believe, not a YouTube channel. I think it's just like a separate video site that they own. 9-11 Explosive Evidence, 9-11 Blueprints for Truth. So let's, let's kind of look into what's going on real quick. Now they've got informa information for us to get. They've got a lawsuit or something kicking in. Let's go look at the evidence, okay? Let's go look at Beyond Misinformation. So, what science says about the destruction of World Trade Center buildings 1, 2, and 7, filled with carefully compiled information, analysis, and references. So, they've got a free download for you to go check out the truth. And this is a full, full book written by these people. And we're not just talking a tiny book. 
but we're talking like 48 pages. Like this is a well created, but this is almost like a school textbook to be honest. And they talk about everything. So if you go around and look at what they have, they've got a, they've got an introduction, science says. So basically they look at the destruction of what happened that day and scientifically analyze it, which is not new. We've seen this happening immediately after the towers fell, but it's glad to see that we've got people who understand this, you know, hardcore to, to look at it. Like, obviously they know. So who demolished the Twin Towers and World Trade Center? So they look at this. Uh, Qui Bono, who benefited from the crime of the century? All right, let's see who benefited. Um, the architects, engineers, scientists, and makeup AE911 Truth provide forensic evidence, video documentation, eyewitness testimony that offer clues to the identity of the perpetrators. But it is a job of serious journalists, trained criminal investigators, and officials in the legislative and judicial branches of government to uncover the who and why of 9 11. In particular, attorneys and judges have both the subpoena power and the legal authorities to offer immunity that will bring forth witnesses and suspects, leading to the conviction of those responsible for planning and carrying out the attacks of 9 11. Now, the thing about that is, man, who did it is an interesting question because way back, you, you have to look at, again, who does benefit from something like this. You know, like, obviously, after 9-11 happened, they had the false flag operation where they sent operators and the entire military, like, operation out into the Middle East. And they've kind of been there for a while, basically running a foothold in that part of the world, uh, effectively creating an, a satellite for America out there. You've got people who have shit like, um, fuck, what is it? They've got, you got people collecting massive insurance payouts on the loss of these towers. Like it's, it's actually really crazy on who benefited out of it. It almost feels like it all, it all, you also have to understand like what happened on that day. It's, it's almost like one of the most perfect crimes that exists out there. It's crazy. Uh, what caused the isolated high-speed ejections? Do the seismic data from the events corroborate with the eyewitness reports? So they've got a bunch of FAQs and like really important stuff. And you can go down almost any question you could have about 9-11 truths are right there. Where are the 9-11 whistleblowers? Many of those who cannot accept the scientific evidence that refuse the official story of the collapse of the three world trial or WTC towers argue if 9-11 was an inside job, surely at least one whistleblower would have come out by now. Which I think is kind of true. You know, if you look at things like the NSA PRISM experiment where they were, you know, running a surveillance unit on people internationally, they would definitely have to have, like Edward Snowden came out talking about it. Why isn't there anybody with 9-11? That, that is a very good question. So they've got things like the official theory at the Twin Towers and then World Trade Center 7 and the official theory, all right, seven year quest to produce an official technical explanation for the destruction of the World Trade Centers and you can look around all you want. This is the long form official theory where they cover the NIST investigation, fireproofing and all that stuff. Um, the whole jet fuel steel beams meme. Yeah, this is an interesting website and I think coming up with, with the anniversary of 9-11, I, I I would really like if people would definitely have an open mind and understand, you know, that they should question what happened during 9-11. I think that there was definitely something else there, but also to be respectful for those who've lost their lives during 9-11. I mean, if I can say anything about it before I go to the next webpage, I, I hope that obviously nothing can bring the, the dead back in any scenario, but... Um, uh, hearts definitely do go out for that, absolutely. So, you know, to be as respectful as I can, but also a person that almost admires and, 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 and seeks for the truth to, to question, you know, what our governments do and everything worldwide, but also to be fucking respectful about it. And if you're going to make the 9-11 joke on 9-11, at least make it a goddamn good one, right? Because I'm sick and tired of the fucking same old memes being sent over and over again, okay? If I see one more fucking evil Patrick looking over the goddamn Twin Towers, I'm going to be a little pissed. But let's go to the next webpage. Oh, hell yeah. Guide to Sex with Dogs and FAQ. All right, dude. It's, um... You can tell it's that part of the week where we're looking up how to fuck dog pussy. God damn. All right, let's get this going. So if, you, if you're eating anything, you know, put it aside. <laughs> Don't watch the video, let's go in. Um, I am 35, male, and live in Northwest United States of America. I raise and show dogs and have enjoyed a sexual relationship with dogs, oh jeez, exclusively since 1982. Having started when I was nine, I don't have sex with people. Jesus Christ. <laughs> What the fuck? People are doing dogs. All right, so what is the difference between a bestialist and a zoophile? 
nothing. It's both fucking disgusting. And you know what? I, I do mean to kink shame, all right? There's going to be somebody who's like, well, why are you kink shaming me? Don't fuck dogs, cats, birds, you know, giraffes, all right? Animals are not meant to be fucked by human beings, okay? Fuck a human. Jesus. A bestialist uses and abuses animals for their own gain. This may include pain, force, or injury in the process. Oh, so pre-serial killer, nice. Much like a rapist, a zoophile has a relationship with their animals akin to that of a husband and wife. Oh, dude, that was like that Jerry Springer fucking episode where the dude fucks his horse and like that blind chick like gets railed by her dog. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're disgusted, Still look it up. It's it's fucking hilarious. This dude marries his horse or something or a llama or whatever the hell it is. What are, it's it's on four legs. Okay, he fucks something on four legs. All right, two lovers. The sexually activities are consenting and mutual, animals can't consent. So that that's a fucking lie right there. With the human and animal sharing their unique sexuality and nonverbal communication, it truly is a unique and special relationship. Now with animals, if the sexual contact is performed in a manner compatible mentally and physically with the animals, it will not be damaged mentally or physically. I mean, if I fuck a dog in the asshole, right, you know what I mean, like light my dick on fire and hate fuck it, it's probably going to be mentally scarred. Even regular sex is going to be weird for the dog, I, or a cat, or whatever, dude. Why am I even thinking that? Zoophiles and I myself do not condone sex with immature animals. Oh yeah, God, they gotta be of age, right? Animals do possess a drive when they're biologically of the right age. Yes, animals can be pressured, even trained, but to me that is something that is unthinkable. A zoophile would not train his or her animals to let themselves be fucked. Such animal action, oh yeah, we're gonna use the word screwed, really? Now we're gonna be fucking slightly PG-13 about it? We just talked about dog pussy, so we're gonna go in. Such actions are the actions, in my honest opinion, of a bestialist. The interspecies relationships is basically one of trust, caring, non-forcing, no abuse. The dogs desire and respond well to sex and it is entirely practical for a human to engage in sex with a male dog or bitch. In every way, a man has sex with a man, uh, or a man and woman have sex, the limit is by your imagination and what the dog is comfortable b Most large breeds, such as Labradors, Mastiffs, St. Bernards, can accommodate a human male quite easily, even when not in heat. The average size of a male dog's penis approximates to that of an average man. In the case of a dog the size of a lab, in the case of a giant breed such as, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to read the measurements of a dog. Dogs have the same sex organs people do, including a clitoris, that can easily be brought to multiple organs. Ah, oh, dude, 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 I don't... Dude, I, I don't, I don't need to think about that shit. I've been into dogs since I was nine years old. It started with masturbating my sister's German Shepherd. I found it really excited me, and the dog enjoyed it as well. I had frequent contact with them, as well as the other dogs belonging to her neighbors and friends. From then on, I was hooked. Though I didn't know anyone who did this and thought I was the only one, I also picked up strays and had sex with them, mostly masturbating them. But around the age of 16, I found one in an abandoned building. He got so excited, he tried to mount me. I took him into my mouth and he quickly came. It made me very hot and I liked the taste. After that, I really got into this. And my dog sex activities continued and once a week visits with my gay friend. I had gay tendencies, but not really into guys. You fucked your friend, we, okay. But dogs just said to me to no end. I took a job at an animal shelter and later at the boarding breeding kennel and had sex with as many dogs as I could. Bro, that scares me. It's like morticians, you know what I mean? Like most... Not to rag on a mortician or anything, but there's got to be like a fair percentage of them that like fuck the dead, you know, that they get. All told, I've had sex with almost a hundred, oh no, a hundred dogs and five were women. I had intercourse with three and the others I frigged. What, what do you, what do you mean? What, you didn't go all the way? Bro, you got, you got to treat them all with love and respect, brother. I had one that loved to be frigged. She would hump and come ten times or more each session. We did that every day for six years. After she was satisfied, she'd lick and nibble my scrot- Oh, okay, okay, you know what? You just fuck off. We're gonna go down, all right? Facts about bitches. One of my lovers were a Bernese mountain dog. I waited till she was in full-blown heat and tried intercourse with her. It took several attempts, starting the 12th day. I lubed up and tried, but couldn't get in. Then I- That's a fucking humble brag, right? You know, like, weird flex, but okay. <laughs> I accidentally slid in and found I had the angle wrong previously. Yeah, because it's a fucking dog, right? You're a human. You have to go in almost a vertical angle, close to about 80% because there's a blind vestibule below the actual entrance. Uh, okay, you know, let's just go down. So the bitch's body temperature is about 101, 102. Great, awesome. You're a fucking human thermometer. So facts about male dogs. I do not have contact with the dog's anus. There is a risk of diseases, no shit. 
There's a risk of diseases with anything. Most dogs will not appreciate or accept this kind of activity. You can be mounted by the dog, though. My Saint Bernard takes me often, and I do not let his knot go inside me. It's much too big. Use your hand as a stop to guide him in and keep the knot out. As it expands, it won't go in. I do take my collie, not at all. The largest breed I'd ever try that with. This is not for the novice, though. The bones inside... Okay, you know what? You can tell this person... No, this person is committed to their dog, all right? Like, they know a lot about fucking just getting that dog. This is a long story, by the way. This just keeps going on. Now, he talks about diseases and stuff. You cannot get the flu, cold, AIDS, HIV, VD, herpes, gonorrhea, syphilis, hepatitis, or any of the 50 STDs you can get. I don't know, man. I don't know. Avoid drinking bitch's milk no matter how often she is wormed. The worm eggs are found in her milk. That is the main reason puppies are born with worms. Dude, I'm not even getting close to a dog's pussy. You think I'm going to fucking suck on dog milk? Get out of here, bro. But at least thank you. This person knows a lot about their dogs. Like, they know a lot, and I believe every single about it. So here they're telling you doggy style, fellatio... Uh, isn't something all women would agree about, but perform fellatio on a dog seems to be something else. Me, myself, I don't see any bigger difference between a human or a canine dong. All right, that that's fine. So it's the canine sex, I told you, it can be very enjoyable if performed correctly. There are a lot of women out there who have tried canines and perform it on a regular basis. All right. God bless. God fucking bless, dude. God bless. That's by Anna. If you threw up a fair bit of times, remember, we, we did look up worse technically, and that was both Bloatfly Girl. No, actually, this was fucking way worse. <laughs> I'm gonna need to shower after this video for sure. I'm real sorry about this. Let's go back out and go somewhere else. Ooh, all right. So we've got the Charles Fort Institute, which is Fortiana Forums. Now, this is an interesting forum page because I always love coming across these like conspiracy mystery forum pages simply due to the fact that I am really into conspiracies. And it feels like a big chunk of the deep web stuff that we do is conspiracies because honestly, conspiracies are almost in this new age nowadays where it feels like they're being generally accepted. You know, for me, I'm a huge believer of many conspiracies, actually. Um, I'm more into conspiracies that are a little grounded in reality. I don't really kind of go off the cuffs, but, you know, things like 9-11, a lot of that stuff I'll really, really look into um, because I don't like taking everything at face value uh, just due to the fact that nothing is true, all right? The world is full of deceptions and lies. Now, without sounding like a total tinfoil hat dude, we're going to go in and browse this forum real quick. Now... Uh, they talk about the human condition, the strangeness of our species. We as human beings are strange. It happened to me, first-hand accounts of high strangeness, which we're totally going to fucking check out because, honestly, we have to. The Conspiracy Board, all right, uh, Esoterica, okay, these are religious symbols, ghosts, new science, parapsychology, religion, and cults. Okay, so we'll open a couple of these boards and, and, and call it a day, okay? So let's go, let's go through the It Happened to Me section. Am I going a bit strange? The Transdimensional Gas Station, okay, so that's exactly what I wanted to hear one <laughs> way. Hi all, this is my first Can I speak? My first post on this forum, and before I go any further, I should perhaps apologize in advance for any misspellings and deformed sentences. English is not my first language. The event I'd like to tell you about took place quite a few years ago, in the early 90s. Somehow I've managed not to think about it for all this time. Recently, however, following somewhat of a crisis in my life, I started to realize how fundamentally strange this experience really was. As far as I remember, the story took place in early July of 93. Dude, that was a year before I was born! I was 18 years old at the time and worked for the summer of the Civic Department of the smallish county, Komen, of Mjolby in mid-eastern Sweden. Ooh, okay, so this isn't just like America, all right? And I apologize to any Swedes in the audience. Uh, I, I definitely fucked up the pronunciations there. Hmm. I'm doing mainly street and park maintenance. Me and a co-worker had finished work for the day pruning hedges and mowing lawns in a remote community 10 English miles away from our home office. On the way back, we drove along in a Volkswagen minibus, went through a rural, quiet, quiet rural area, fields and scattered bits of pine forest. There were only a few separated farmhouses and cottages along the road which is the only tarmac road in the area. All roads that connect with it along that stretch are either gravel roads or dirt paths. The summer alone, we must have driven along the road at least a hundred times. 
So he knew it quite well by that time. After driving approximately five to seven kilometers along this road, my coworker who was driving happened to notice that we were running low on gas. In fact, the needle of the gauge didn't even move from its bottom position. The car was still running smoothly, but we doubted we could run on patrol fumes for another 10 km or so. At this point, we had entered one of the few places along the road where it was flanked by woods on both sides. So the car was equipped with long range radio, this is actually quite a long, long story. Jesus Christ, let's go into this, okay? Let's go down. So they go to this place. It's some civic department's repair shop. I now convinced that we have been sold diesel instead of patrol and rather pissed because we'd have to empty the tank by hand, which is quite messy. A guy at the repair shop helped us out of the hand pump emptying the gas tank into a large plastic tub. Yikes, you put patrol in it. For those of you who don't know, if you put diesel in a patrol tank, you really have to like fucking jank that shit out of the system. Um, phew, don't make that mistake. <laughs> I think you actually can't make the mistake. Like if you go to the gas station, they actually have different nozzles. So it's like completely tart proof before you go into that shit. But the further you go down, let's go into this. Okay, this is a really long story, but I'm just trying to paraphrase as much as I can. Several years later, I got into a discussion with my grandfather who had lived and worked in the area, told him the story, responded by saying that he had a strange experience on the same road. When working as a book courier in the 60s and 70s, before he anything else, several times, all right, let's kind of go up and see what I'm missing out. I'm sorry if I'm skipping through the story here real quick. It's just a long story like this. Jesus Christ. Um, here it is. The guy asked us where we got the gas. We told him, chuckling about the strange gas station, even adding that we'd never noticed it before. Now, I really expected the guy to laugh along with us and tell us about the strange old guy we'd met. Instead, he looked totally confused as something like, what gas station? All of a sudden, I was overwhelmed by how strange it was that we'd seen the gas station before and became increasingly certain that every previous time we'd driven along the road, I hadn't been there at all. Glancing at my friend's face, it was obvious he was thinking the same thing. They asked for a repair guy, and there was no gas station on that road. Eventually, we left to change out of our work clothes and decided to take my friend's car. Drive back the way we came from and see if we could find the gas station. We actually drove the entire way back to town. We'd worked in that day and back again. So basically, they came across a gas station that didn't fucking exist in the first place, which which is weird to me because um, I've heard stories like that. You know, I've heard weird stories where like hitchhikers from like different time periods are on the road and stuff. And I, I'd never pick up a hitchhiker in the first place. Like I'm always deathly scared of like letting a ghost into my. I mean, I don't believe in ghosts and spirits or any of that apparitions. I'm more scared of, like, letting some rando into my car so they can, like, stab my neck out, you know what I mean? Like, just just don't do that. Just just don't, okay? Like, really don't. All right? Like, y y half the time, look, I might sound like I'm some crazy dude when I say that, but it's always better to be safe than it is sorry, right? And we've got more stuff, so haunted hotels. Let's look at the Ouija experience, right? And here's the Ouija experience I sat down. They had a Ouija experience, and it said, who is there? Eleanor, Eleanor Aquitaine. What is the message for us? Nothing is cheap. Clive spoke up and said, "You are my spirit guide." Yes. So they had a, they had a, they had a, they had a, they had a hoot and a holler, talking to the fucking, talking to the dead. <laughs> all right. Um, again, I don't believe in Ouija boards at all. Too like it's, I, I, I sound like I'm a not a fun guy to have around a ghost hunting adventure. Adventure. Quite the opposite. Actually, keep me around. I definitely will keep you entertained during it. So here's the conspiracy section where they talk about the hoax of the moon landing. Britain is a police state. Is vegan meat just meat? Uh, Pensmore, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein's suicide or murder, murder? That's fucking scary shit, actually. I feel like I should make a video on that because I'm really into conspiracy theories, so I kind of want to cover that. If you want to see a Jeffrey Epstein video, we do. I know it's completely different from... Not really. We'll look at that because that is some crazy, crazy shit for sure looking into it. Pizzagate, I've heard of that. Collapse of the U.S. economy imminent. Chinese hardware hacking... Big Brother is getting bigger. Uh, Elon Musk's Starman conspiracy? What is this? This is so crazy, it might even be real. The first car in space. I can't hear to say, I can't wait to hear what the conspiracy crews say about this. The SpaceX launch is uh, heralded as being a success, and below stream is reported as being live footage of Elon Musk's car in space. So it can either be total hoax or complete bullshit. That I I actually believe is is his situation. I I don't I don't disregard the fact that he hasn't been in space. You got to realize it's 2019. If if the next bastion of human like the the space being the final frontier, like we're going to get there, um, launching a car into space is not overtly a difficult thing to do. <laughs> We've been polluting space for a while. 
Uh, let's go read the, um, is vegan meat just meat? That's interesting, let's look at that. Uh, I had some vegan jerky the other day that I would happy, happily believe was real meat had I not known otherwise. Is there a real life marginally softer version of the plot to Soylent Green going on? What, vegan meat is fucking people? Eww. No, not really, but I've kind of noticed that it's, it's become more of a popular thing, especially in Canada. Like if you go to a coffee shop, like we have Tim Hortons, they have like vegan Beyond Meat burgers, which I had like one and it's not fucking real meat or anything. Obviously don't fall for the Kool-Aid, but like they're getting close to that shit, brother. They are really getting close to it. Uh, Murder of Martin Luther King, Oversight, Is It Just For Real? And I've got 33 pages of this, so if you really want to look through this, you can. There are a great variety of them. Some of them are really, really old, like, you know, stuff related to Gaddafi, uh, U.S. secret operations in Haiti, of all places. U.S. mercenaries arrested in Haiti were part of a half-baked scheme to move $80 million for embattled president. Jesus Christ, that that I actually believe. The U.S. US CIA Army SEALs, they're, they're always into this fucking weird shit. Now, you go to the religion and cults, you've got things like Scientology, uh, Atheism, Mormons, Hindu Thread, The Family, or The Children of God, which is, I think, yeah, we, that's actually something I watched uh, with, um, that, that is, that is a good documentary on Netflix, you guys should go check it out, like, it's gotten me fucking thinking a million things. Anna, A Goddess from Modern Times, let's look at that one real quick. Cult-like lure of Anna attracts anorexics? What? Okay, this seemed like an odd development, but I thought it might be worth a thread. So here they've got a source or something, and it's it's a Yahoo page, okay, so it's it's not it's not something that important. Um, let's go look at that real quick. So in Chicago, they call her Anil. An, 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 An. She is a role model to some, a goddess to others, a subject of drawings, prayers, and even a creed. She tells them what to eat and mocks them when they don't lose weight. And yet, while she is a very real presence in the lives of many of their followers, she exists only in their mind. Anna is short for anorexia. And to the alarm of experts, many who suffer from the, poten the potentially fatal eating disorder are part of an underground movement that promotes self-starvation. <sighs> followers include young women and teens who wear red Anna bracelets and offer one other encouraging words of thin spiration on web pages and blogs. Don't, don't fuck, I cannot believe, that's a religion? Really? To not fucking eat? Okay, and it's a pretty big one. Now, I'm gonna tell you this much real quick, okay? Don't don't be anorexic, all right? Just don't do it. Um, same thing with like bulimia and shit like that. Look, I, I get it, people fall into these eating disorders and they basically become life is what it is. Like it becomes like a big thing for them. Don't do it, you know, it's, it's, it's not what you wanna get into, ladies and gentlemen. It, it can fuck your life up pretty hard. So uh, just, 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 just letting you just stay away from that shit, please. Please just stay away from it. Now, we're gonna back out of this and uh, we're gonna go somewhere else because I spent way too much time on the Fortiana forums, which are a great place if you wanna check conspiracies, religion, or just random weird shenanigans kicking in. So let's back out and go somewhere else. All right, Pietre Stunt, review of Freemasonry. Now, I believe I've actually seen this fucking website before, so this is a, a hot, spicy Freemason stuff. Now, Freemasonry is an interesting thing where uh, Freemasonry is basically a group of individuals who almost have like a weird supplementary religion where they, where it's almost like a brotherhood, uh, a Masonic lodge where they get together and I guess plan for the future. A lot of people consider it to be like, you know, uh, a, a gathering place for the Illuminati, shit like, you know, the Trilateral Commission, Bilderberg Group, all that stuff. It's an interesting set of things, but let's look into it. The Masonic Magazine on Freemasonry and Research into Freemasonry made by Freemasons. So the first known use of the word Freemason in the form Freemason occurs in the city of London, letter book H of 9, August 1376. Though the word is in fact deleted in favor of Masons, Masons and Freemasons were interchangeable during the 5th and 16th centuries, and Freemasons were generally meant to de denote hewers and setters of freestone. Masons, Masons being used to embrace all stone workers. Ashmole, Ashmole in this diary wrote that what he thought of Freemason refer fellowship of the five Freemasons, all right, so this is just the origin of Freemasons, you know, the original fucking Masons out there. But let's go down a little bit further into it. So uh, let's go see what else they have got. So they've got a bunch of news clippings, so researching Freemasonry in the 21st century, geometric properties of Masonic symbols. So synchronicity of the universe is determined by a certain mathematical constraint, constant that express themselves in the form of patterns and cycles in nature. 
Mathematical and geometric constraints are confirmed. Let me just see. Okay, 60% charge. That's perfect. Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of Turkey. So as far as I know, they're actually pretty international. So if you want to join the Freemasons, I believe every country at this point has a Freemasonry guild. Fuck, even Pakistan might have a Freemasonry guild out there. Islam and Freemasonry. Is there a Masonic mythology? Well, let's open that up real quick. And they've got a whole page over here. So if you wanted to learn everything you can, I could of course just say yes and that would be it, but it wouldn't be fair, would it? So let me be present and prevent a, present a more systematic answer. We have 143 manuscripts called the Old Charges. The oldest being Regius dated 1390. That is old, dude. That is vintage shit right there, brother. That is old. Is it a myth? Adam, Nimrod, Lamech, Noah, Abraham, Euclid, Hermes, Trigmester, Trismexistus. Okay, I, I, I can't read. It's fucking, it's way too late at night. So they've got like how they're connecting things over to uh, mythology, actually. Morality and Freemasonry, the Masonic One Dolan. Oh, let's see them, One Dolan. The ritual of Freemasonry is well endowed with symbols, things familiar which could convey a hidden meaning to those initiated. Man uses sign, pictures, and emblems and words to convey ideas from individual to individual. And some of the aforementioned lend themselves to symbolism more than the others. This was especially so in the Age of Enlightenment during the 18th century, and much more so in what we know as the USA, which came under French influence. Those involved were Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson, assisted by the artist Pierre-Eugène de Cimetière. Du Cimetière was an accomplished portrait painter, and he had designed the state seals for Delaware and Virginia. So basically the point is, on the left over here and the right, these are the USA Great Seals. So obviously you see the, um, the eagle, uh, the, the bald eagle of the United States, and then the pyramid with the eye, which I don't fucking, why does the US have the pyramid with the eye on it? Like it's just, it's out there. And these, the, obviously if you look at the dollar sign real quickly, right? What is over here is the pyramid with the eye, the all seeing eye. And I guess a lot of people relate that to the Illuminati or, or the symbol of Freemasonry. And that's what it is, which, to me, it's always been a weird symbol, like why the pyramid with the eye. I just don't get why the United States would go that way. But I, I, I don't know. Is it a sign that the United States has run under Freemason influence? I think that the United States has run under the Illuminati influence, which controls multiple countries of the world. But then again, I'm saying shit that's going to get me shot in the head. So <laughs> let me go down a little bit and see everything else. So they've got all about Freemasonry for Freemasons. Freemasonry is an esoteric society only in, these, only in that certain aspects are private, which is true because there are lodges you can go to, I believe, and you can apply and actually see what goes on. There just are private events held in these lodges where you can't get into it. But let me see how you join the Freemasonry, okay? Ask a Freemason you know about it. Don't generally expect a Freemason to ask you. The general adage is, to be one, ask one. Merely contacting a Mason online and desiring membership does not grant you the privilege to join. If you don't know any Freemasons, look in your phone book and call them and search online and send an email to a lodge in the area. Don't be afraid to go to, don't be afraid to, go to your local Masonic building, sometimes referred to as a hall, temple, or center. Knock on the door and ask someone there about it. But please pay attention because there are several bodies self-proclaimed as a true and ancient Freemasonry. That's not the truth. Unfortunately, Freemasonry is not a trademark protected by law. The United Grand Lodge of England is the mother Grand Lodge of all the regular Grand Lodges of the world. Find out on their website which Grand Lodge of your country they recognize as a regular one. Arrangements will be made to meet you socially, to find out more about you, and to give you a chance to find out more about Freemasonry. A committee of members from the Lodge will contact you to arrange a meeting. If the meeting will be of mutual satisfaction, you will be requested to fill in the form for admission. So, okay, you don't have to be rich to join. Initiation fees vary. Annual dues range from $40 to $300 a year in North America. Not bad. I mean, that's kind of what some people pay for their fucking credit cards, if anything. Last but not least, each lodge, the body of members, is different than the next, so to be sure to take your time to finding one that's right for you. Now, that's the Freemasonry situation right there, and honestly, I mean, if it's that, I I'm really interested in it in general, so like, they almost make it seem like to join Freemasonry... <laughs> It's really not that hard. It really, really isn't, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it is. It doesn't seem like joining Freemasonry is bad. It seems like they've got all the things right going on in the world. Like, it's just... While it sounds like a secretive cult, I feel like ultimately if Freemasons aren't hurting anybody, then all the power to them, right? But if they run the world in the background, then 
doesn't that make them more enamoring, if you know what I mean? Anyways, though, that being said, that was a uh, website where if you wanted to learn about Freemasonry, you absolutely can. So Pietra Stones, find that, and you will find all you would really need to know as a primer guide to Freemasonry. That being said, let's back out and go somewhere else. Whew, ladies and gentlemen, that was an interesting session of deep web browsing. Ladies and gentlemen, you learned a lot about conspiracies, you learned a lot about old animals. You know, uh, today was a lot of thinking that went on. While we understood some really weird shit like how to fuck your dog, we also learned about joining a secretive organization, which is just apparently really easy to do. <laughs> So, yeah, today's deep web video has been weird. Um, you know, we've looked at a lot of conspiracies. we looked at interdimensional gas stations. I gotta say, this week, probably one of the more interesting ones we've had in a while, you know? So, ladies and gentlemen, that being said, thank you very much for showing up. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like your dislike, and I'll try to have a video for next time we did the deep web browsing series. But for now, sit back, relax, have a great one, have an enjoyable Sunday. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.